Good morning, church. Thank you for taking some time out of your week to join us here at the corner of East and Talford as we worship our Lord together. And whether you're here in person or online or hanging out with us afterwards, we're just so thankful that you've decided to join us today and this morning. This morning, uh, we are going to begin our service with some songs of praise and worship. So let me just invite you to stand if you're able as we read a call to worship from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And then the final verse in the psalm says, The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Let's sing in Christ alone together. Calls me home 
here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Appreciate that, uh, centering our life on the name of Jesus. 
That's what we strive to do each and every week, right? That's what we strive to do each and every day. And this year, our theme verses have come from the end of Ephesians chapter 3, and I'm going to read them for us in a moment. But, you know, it really informs this idea, the importance of together as a church family, one of our biggest contributions is to be able to pray for one another, to communicate to God on behalf of one another. Now, last week, when I stood up here during this time, I read Isaiah 53 about how, how Jesus, the one who would come to carry our sorrows and bear our, our, our illnesses, right, to heal our, our sicknesses. And I had no idea just how significant uh, God would use that in the lives of, uh, of many of many of you and many of those of you watching. And so thank you for communicating your need of the help of Jesus over the course of this week. Isn't it, I think sometimes we can forget that when we, in our hurriedness sometimes to come together uh, in this space, that uh, there are difficult things that we endure. And uh, not all of them are easily... Um, easily discarded or moved on from and so we need to be able to help one another in this so you know for our for us kind of the movement or the the activating uh force of our of this strategy of serving our community is cap is encapsulated by these three words right serve pray respond can you say that with me serve pray respond we're going to do all of that, serve, pray, respond in the grace that God gives us. It's always spring, even when it feels chilly like fall. <laughs> it's always spring uh, at the SCMC. And that prayer, serving is our submission, an attitude of submission, of humility before God. And that prayer to pray is our communication to listen to and to talk to God. And we do that on behalf of one another. As we do, we are then compelled to serve. Uh, to respond to those around us. We're compelled to respond to those around us. And so, let me ask you this. And you know, we're, I'm not going to ask you to share what you might be going through, but maybe do, are you currently going through something that you think it would be really good if I could just share, if I could just know that people are praying for that? Is that, do you, do you have something that you think, ah, oh, it would be really good to know that people are praying for me in that? Are you willing to, to just raise your hand and say, I've got something I need you to be praying for? Are you all right with that? And, uh, and thank, you for, thank you for doing that. And that's hard even to, to acknowledge that, right? And, uh, and yet in so doing, it's a great reminder for those who are willing to share and those who aren't. Uh, and by the way, just so you know, I'm not a hand raiser. When, when I sit in other places and people tell me to raise my hand, I actually... I don't. I tuck it in. I'm like, I'm not raising my hand for you no matter what you ask. So I get it. But here's what else. The other thing I get, I also get that I go through stuff that I sure hope that people are praying for. And so uh, we need to do that. Uh, we need to do that. <clears throat> and so we need to do that in, in good things and in hard things. And so it's good to have Art Cotton uh, back here with us after just over a week in hospital. And so he's here. <clears throat> and so he would say uh, thank you for your prayer support for he and Annie uh, over the course of this time and much very much needed moving forward. So he has now transi transitioned to going home uh, at his home. And, uh, and so there are some adjustments to be made there as he regains strength and, and uh, adapts to treatment and things like that. And so would you continue to be in prayer for them uh, as well? And uh, Pat Halls is having his uh, second hip. He liked the one, first one so well. He asked to go twice, and so they are accommodating his request, and so he's having uh, his second hip replaced this week. So pray for Lori or Pat Moore? Lori. Yeah, yeah. They both agree. Pray for Lori Moore uh, as Pat gets his second surgery. And we're thankful that his first surgery went well and is healed well enough that uh, he can do that. And we are also thankful that today is Will Archer's birthday. Can you believe that? Will Archer right there in the middle of the room. It's the, it's the birthday spot. Is it the birthday spot? I don't know. If it's your birthday, you sit in the middle of the room. Everybody turns and looks and says, happy birthday, Will. 
yeah. Uh, we love Will Archer. Uh, there's a long list of reasons, but let me just share a couple of mine. Appreciate you, Will. Uh, your your positive attitude, your willingness to serve, and you're just a lot of fun to be around. And uh, just thank you, and continue to pursue those dreams that God has given you. And I know that He will not only uh, He'll help use you to bless others, just as He has done around you, as you do. And so may God bless you today on your birthday. Let me read these words for, for us from Ephesians chapter 3. Words that kind of center in on this aspect of, of communicating to God uh, together as a church family. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So, Father, we come before you and we give you thanks for the freedom that you give us to be heard by you and to hear from you. Thank you for being our safe place, our refuge, our confidant. As, uh, as life throws at us uh, unexpected twists and turns, God, you are faithful and you give your strength and power to endure amid those difficulties. And so thank you for the gift of family united in Jesus Christ, the partnership of brothers and sisters to help carry life's burdens. And uh, whether we know it or not, God, uh, that's an active way that you, uh, that you move through us, and we give you thanks for that. And so today we acknowledge some of those things that are weighing us down. Uh, that we need your help with, that we need your strength and power to overcome or to endure. And we ask, God, that you would indeed uh, be at work in those situations, that we might glorify you amid them and not wait till it's over, but point to Jesus our strength. And so thank you for bringing Art home from hospital, and we pray for continued healing for him. And we pray that you would be with Pat as he goes into this next surgery. May it go as well or even better than the first. And we thank you for Will, and uh, we pray, God, your hand of blessing on his life. Continue to guide him in the choices that lie before him, and uh, use him as a blessing to others. Father, would you strengthen us and strengthen our commitment to display the love and the truth of Christ into those places you call us. And for we pray in the powerful name of Jesus and all God's people say, amen. Amen. Thanks so much. Hey, uh, it's Kid Jam time. So we are going to let uh, Mrs. Seert I think she's already out there. And so if you are helping in Kid Jam today, then you can make your way out in our kids uh, age 2 to grade 6, you can make your way down uh, to the Kid Jam room and um, just uh, parents as you sign your kids in to Kid Jam, you'll have to sign them out at the conclusion of the service as well. Alright? Awesome. Huh? Alright, well we're going to continue some songs of worship so let me invite you to stand with us if you're able as we, uh, as we continue singing.
It's uh, it's good. I love I love that song. I thank you for just continuing to point us to, to the power in the name of Jesus. May God give us the spirit of endurance, the spirit of Jesus Christ amid the things that we face. And uh, today it's a privilege for us to welcome the ministry of Tear Fund Canada. And uh, I'm not going to explain Tear Fund Canada to you in a whole lot because that's why we brought them here. Uh, so, um, but I want to introduce to you Don Miller, and this is, and so Don is uh, Church Relations Director for Tier Fund Canada, and uh, here's something that you can know about about that. So Don actually is from Sarnia, and uh, and so a number of years ago, uh, thir- over 30 years ago, right? <laughs> over 30 years ago, he Long moved from ago. Sarnia <laughs> to Ottawa to pastor in Ottawa, and to balance the universe. Uh, we 
we're living in Ottawa, and God sent us here, and uh, we have been in ministry here uh, in Sarnia. And so uh, there you go. That's your fun fact of Tier Fun Canada. Thanks for coming. All that was free. Can you imagine? Um, but here's uh, one more thing that we appreciate. Uh, uh, our connection with Tier Fund Canada is, uh, has been actually long standing with through our denomination, the EMCC, in their previous iteration as well. And, uh, and then most recently, our daughter Ainsley has been uh, at work with Tier Fund. And so um, that has kind of precipitated. Uh, bringing uh, Don here. So I'm going to invite Don and we're going to pray for him and uh, ask that, uh, you know, we have uh, some of those bottle, water bottles at home, actually, as well. I don't know whether you know that or not. You've uh, got a lot of tear fun stuff in your house. Yeah, you know, I didn't, I didn't know whether I should uh, bring it here, but I do have a t-shirt and Under mm -hmm. Armour over, uh, uh, over thing and uh, a sweatshirt. Actually, I probably have three t-shirts. <laughs> I'm sorry if there's a funding deficit <laughs> at uh, Tier Fund. We know where to look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, that's great. So let's, let me pray for you, Don, and thank you. uh, thanks for coming. Father, thank you so much uh, for uh, your favor towards us through Jesus Christ Amen. and the calling you've placed on our lives to make the name and the love and the grace of Jesus Christ known. And for the ministry of Tier Fund, uh, and their work around the world. God, we pray your hand of blessing upon them. Mm -hmm. And now as Don comes uh, to share with us, we pray also that you would empower him to speak that which would resonate most uh, with Let's us pray. and for the sake of your kingdom. Mm -hmm. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, good morning. It's great to be here with you this morning. As Dave was saying, I was thinking as I was driving down Telford Street this morning how many times I used to ride my bike down Telford Street as my parents used to worship at Temple Baptist Church just down the street here. And so it's great to be with you this morning and to have the opportunity to, in some ways, come home and to balance the universe, as you said, Dave. And uh, some of you here this morning might have known my mother, Fran Miller. She used to be the manager at the Sarnia Christian Bookstore. And so some of you would have been in the Christian Bookstore many years ago and uh, connected in that way. Um, as Dave has already said, we have the privilege at Tier Fund Canada to be partners with the EMCC, specifically in our work in Ethiopia. And so I'm going to be talking a little bit about Ethiopia this morning and sharing with you what God is doing in the context of Ethiopia. But uh, before I do that, just let me just say a few words about Tier Fund Canada. We are a relief and development organization, and so we respond in Jesus' name to different things that are happening around the world. And we have the privilege of doing that through the Canadian Food Grains Bank. Some of you might know the Canadian Food Grains Bank as a Christian NGO here in Canada that gets direct government funding for disaster and development work around the world. And as I was coming to Sarnia this weekend, I was driving down Confederation Line, and I saw a number of farms on Confederation Line that are supporting the Canadian Food Grains Bank. So it was kind of great to see that and to connect with that. You know, as we think about uh, 2020 and 2021, we've had quite the years, haven't we? You know, and we're still kind of living in that world and in that environment. But in our world at Tier Fund Canada, 2021 has been the year when we've been responding to more disasters in our world than ever. And sometimes, you know, we get so caught up in the whole COVID thing that we forget what's really happening in our world in certain places. Most recently, we've been dis responding to South Sudan flooding. Some of you might know that South Sudan is one of the most desperate nations on earth. I was just reading this work week that 7.2 million people in South Sudan are living in food insecurity, and yet they were hit in the last couple of weeks with flooding, and so we've res been responding into that. We've been responding into Haiti with the Haiti devastation. Again, such a desperate, needy country in our world, and you know, thinking about those missionaries that were kidnapped, but we've been responding with food into Haiti. Um, Tigray, Ethiopia, the northern part of Ethiopia has been caught up in internal civil conflict. <clears throat> and you know, the, the horrible thing that happened here in this specific uh, instance is that uh, there were thousands, hundreds of thousands of refugees fleeing the conflict in Tigray, and they were in desperate new need of food. Tier Fund responded through our partner, the Kalahewit Church in Ethiopia. We had 50 tons of food on the border ready to distribute, and the rebels turned us away. 
And if you can just imagine for a second what it's like to be hungry and in desperate need of food, and you can look over the fence and you can see people that are hungry and the rebels standing there turning the trucks away. And so that's the reality of what we sometimes live in and live with. But fortunately, just a couple of weeks ago, the trucks were able to get through in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. The DR Congo volcano explosion, Mount Ngorongoro, people in uh, Goma living under 40 feet of lava. Again, trying to get our minds around what it's like to have been upset like that, and all of a sudden you're turned out of your home. But we responded through the Baptist Church in Goma to respond to that tragedy. And, uh, you know, it's hard for us to even get our, our minds around this. The India COVID crisis, uh, we have such a valuable partner in India. And right in the middle of the COVID crisis in India, when it was at their very worst, we would be talking to our partner in India, and they would be sharing to us how hour after hour, they were constantly going to the Lord in prayer, just asking for grace to respond to the COVID crisis. And so we have such a valuable partner there in uh, India. Now you might know this person. We have the privilege at Tier Fund Canada to be involved in our very first Canadian Indigenous project through a Buffalo project out in Saskatchewan. And Ainsley had the privilege to go for the very first time to this particular reserve out in Saskatchewan. And here she is standing in front of the buffalo, and she ate her first buffalo burger while she was out there. She wasn't quite sure if she'd get through that. But we are just so privileged to respond to a reconciliation project in Saskatchewan with our First Nation brothers and sisters. And we're going to be sharing a little bit more about that in the, in the next few weeks as that project begins to develop. But can you imagine the excitement of people living on reserves and seeing the buffalo come back to places where the buffalo were wiped out? And so there's a lot of excitement in some of those places out in Saskatchewan about the buffalo coming back. Let me ask you this question this morning. Have you ever had to respond to someone in desperate need? In 1984, I was going to school in the city of Chicago. And in one of our particular uh, classes that we were in, we had a project where we had to go out and serve in a housing project. And so I remember one Wednesday afternoon going for the very first time into this housing project, went up to the 12th floor, knocked on the door, and the door was opened by a, a very short widow that was wearing very thick glasses. We walked into her apartment, and the moment we walked into her apartment, we were met with a wave of odor. We looked into her apartment, and you couldn't see the floor because of the garbage. The white tile was black. And here was this lady, she had been living in this desperate situation for months. And it was our privilege and responsibility to speak into her life. And so for the next two hours, we went about talking to her, cleaning her apartment. And for 12 weeks, we went back every week to be with her in her situation. And as I reflect back on that, it reminds me very much of what it must be like when we are asked to respond as the hands and feet of Jesus to be with people. One of the things that we know about Jesus is that he always had a heart and compassion for people in need. Needs for food, needs for healing, needs for relational wholeness. Jesus cared desperately and deeply for people. I think of that verse in Mark's gospel where it says, often when Jesus saw the needs of people, he was filled with compassion for the needs of others. That word compassion is a very interesting word. In the Greek language, it's the word splank nitsomai. It literally means being moved in the very core of who you are as a person. And so when you have compassion for others, you are moved at the very core of who you are, not only to feel sorry for the situation, but splank nitsomai means that when you are moved with compassion, you have to do something. You have to speak into it, and you have to respond with action. And so that's what we see in the life of Jesus. We see him meeting the needs of people. At Tear Fund, we are called to be with people. And often, 
as we are called to be with people, we are confronted by people in desperate need. And so we hear stories of people surviving disasters. We hear stories of people being displaced from their homes. We hear stories of moms and dads who are forced to send their children to the city to fend for themselves because they just can't afford to feed them. We hear stories of those affected by climate challenges in our world. We hear stories of inequality and inequity of people living in our world. We hear of those living in extreme poverty. And we also hear people who use this phrase, the hunger season, to describe what they are living in. The hunger season. Have you ever had to experience the hunger season? The hunger season actually refers to that period of time when people come to the end of the food that they have grown in the previous growing season, and then there's a gap between they, when they can harvest food again from the next growing season. And that gap is called the hunger season. Now, we have two boys in our family, and every now and then my kids would come to me and they would say something like this, Dad, there's nothing to eat. You ever heard that phrase in your family? There's nothing to eat. And you know, really what they're saying is, there's nothing that I like to eat, right? And when you say we're living in the hunger season, it literally means the cupboard is bare. There is no food to eat. And the reality today is that there are millions upon millions of people who are living in the hunger season with no food to eat. One of those countries where people are living in the hunger season is the country of Ethiopia. A beautiful country, beautiful people, so friendly and welcoming when we visit with them. But it's a country experiencing explosive population growth, extreme poverty, ongoing climate challenges, severe internal tensions. I already talked about Tigray. And millions of people facing the reality of the hunger season. We are so thankful at Tier Fund Canada that we have a valuable church partner in Ethiopia serving as the hands and feet of Jesus to those who are struggling with the hunger season, bringing just a little bit of hope and the love of Christ to people that are feeling overwhelmed, discouraged, and disheartened. And often when I talk to our partner and I ask them, how do you do it? How do you make it through seeing people in such desperate need? And they will say to me, it's one person at a time as we are driven by the relentless love of Jesus Christ. And so that's what Tear Fund is all about. We mobilize God's church in the very poorest places to help people release their God-given potential into their communities. And so as much as you here in this church are reaching out into your community with the love of Jesus Christ, there are churches all across Ethiopia this morning that are doing the same thing, responding as the hands and feet of Jesus Christ into their little corner of the world. As much as we as Christ followers are asked to share our faith with people in an equal and in just as an important way, we are asked to share what we have as the hands and feet of Christ. Love God, love people. And isn't it interesting that that is exactly what we see in the formation of the early church in the book of Acts? Listen to these words. Acts chapter 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer, Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together, and they had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. 
They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added daily to their number those who were being saved. It must have been incredible to have been there on that day when the Holy Spirit came and the church was birthed in a special and a new way. Things were happening. Signs and wonders were awakening people to this new reality. Homes were being opened for meals. People were sharing their possessions. It was just so beautiful and so common to be with people and to talk about what was happening and to share all that you had with each other. And of course, as you think about the book of Acts, you also think a little bit about the dark side of what was happening in what happened with Ananias and Sapphira. But here in the book of Acts, the church was growing rapidly. In many ways, people were simply trying to figure life out. They were trying to figure church out. And then we come to Acts chapter 6. And in Acts chapter 6, we, we see for us part of the reality of what happens when people are forgotten in the excitement of the early church. Listen to these words, Acts chapter 6, verse 1. In those days when the number of disciples were increasing, the church was growing, the Christian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the distribution of food. And so the twelve, <clears throat> they gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, Choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them. And we will give attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. <clears throat> this proposal pleased the whole group. And so they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon. Parmenius and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. And so the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Here's the reality. We know that whenever something new is started, sometimes things are overlooked. And in this particular example, the daily distribution of food to the Greek widows was being overlooked. They were beginning to enter their hunger season. And so some things began to surface in this newly created church and community. And two problems have come to the surface. One, obviously, the widows are not being fed. And secondly, people are developing a spirit of complaining and grumbling in the context of this early church. What I would suggest to you is that we are seeing just a little bit of a culture clash. Acts 6 talks about it. It says the culture clash is between those who are Greek, and the Greeks in the city who have come from the provinces to the city, and those who are Hebraic in background, those who lived in Jerusalem. And there's two different groups, both who love Jesus equally, that are having this culture clash and they're butting heads. And so the disciples, they decide they need to do something about it, and they do what any church community does when they're facing a problem. They called a meeting. And in the context of that meeting, they say, how do we get to the bottom of what we're dealing with? How do we make sure that the widows are fed, 
And at the same time, how do we make sure that the church continues to grow? Two equally important things. I want to take you this morning to the country of Ethiopia. And we're going to meet together a lady named Nagest. And as we meet her, we're going to learn a little bit of her story of how she was living with the reality of the hunger season. Let's meet Nagest. Negist joined a program set up by Tier Fund's local Ethiopian partner, run at the church nearby. They not only trained her on how to make her farmland productive, but also supported a self-help group where she learned how to manage money and save for her family's future. Bita <laughs> Uh, Tana Siltana Kade, Tason Tani, Ta was an eye, Copido Ekasha Madayas, Taketai, Copido Ekalo Ekasha Mada, Taketa Kalayas, Siltana Payet. In Casima Yuapa Kado Iaga, Ta was an eye amateur at the Akasha Madai Kadayas, the Sapesha Mas. No one does a Gamalatiba Beika Eroko, Gakika Eroko, Lametica Boko. Canada fe de ia asandende da gani nudu sa kanu la medu sona nudu wan kanu la medu sona nu na zelta na gidi be enna ke ta ka besi do sona eta u de ia du sa ra salwa arata de ia to se wan ta eta kanada qati de is ku de gidi medu tan ke de tu gati ke do sona be de ma de gidi eta denti da to sai eta u mara mara zere ta be zere ta ga kana jin salwa to sai eta anjo yaks Isn't that a great story? To, to see a life radically transformed where just a few short years ago this lady was living in poverty and today she has hope and her life has been changed by Jesus. 
In 2018, a project was started in southern Ethiopia with our church partner, Tara Peza, to bring together church leaders and pastors and to talk about the needs in their community and what could be done to actually address the needs in their community and how to lift people out of extreme poverty. Pastors were helped to see that God had a way to help people live differently, to understand what holistic ministry is all about. They learned about the root causes of poverty, and they learned about what they could do to respond and to speak into that. And so when you visit Ethiopia this morning, you will hear story after story like Negest. Did you hear in the video how she was living in extreme poverty? She was without hope, with no place to turn. Did you hear that her main problem was not having enough food? And she carried the burden of having to feed nine children? Can you imagine having to eat leaves to survive? Moms, can you imagine feeding your kids leaves to survive. The family suffered from hunger and disease, no money to pay the health center. She lost all her farm animals because of drought. She says in her own words, I endured years of darkness, years of suffering, hunger, and death. And she said, I had no other options other than to believe that God had a way. For Negest, it was a daily struggle for survival as the hunger season devastated her family. And then one day, I imagine it was a fateful day, Negest was invited to a church. A church like your church. A church that cared for its community. A church that had a desire to speak out and live the life of Jesus a local church that cared for people, a local church that was well aware of the needs in their community that had taken the training and desired to follow Jesus to where the need was greatest. At that church, if we were to go there today, we would sit in a circle actually at the back of the church and we would hear story after story of lives radically transformed because this church desired to follow Jesus and put into practice the words of the Gospels of caring for your neighbor. Negest, she joined a self-help group where she learned about saving money. And for the very first time, she had money to, to pay for different things. She knew now the dignity of being able to have her own money to send her own kids to school. Her conservation agriculture training allowed her to know the wonder of having surplus food and what that looked like and what that meant. And so if we were to go and meet Negest this morning, you would hear her story of coming from that place of extreme poverty into sufficiency. You would hear her deep gratitude for all who made that possible. And even in the little video, Negest says, thank you, Canada, for helping to change my life. Isn't it exciting to hear how God is working and to hear stories of God's power at work transforming lives? It seems to me like what is happening in Ethiopia is just a small picture of the book of Acts and that early church. Needs are being met, people are being fed, and the church is growing. One of the very first projects that Ainsley had the opportunity to work at when she joined Tier Fund Canada was a community impact report from Ethiopia. And the project was all about looking at those churches that had taken that early training, and then to look at them two years later to see had anything actually changed in the life of those churches. 
Last year, just before the pandemic started, I was in Ethiopia. I was at one of those churches. I sat at the back of the church with the pastor, and I said, Pastor, tell me about your church. And he explained to me the widows that were being fed and all about it. And he said, there's about 1,500 people that call this church home. And I, I was like encouraged. I, I was, that's, that's amazing. And then I left. And when that community impact assessment report was being done by Ainsley and kind of pulling all the data together, I went through the report and I looked for that church. And as I looked for that church, the number was there for 2021, January. How many people are in that church? 2,500 people are in that church. Why was that? Because this church understood Love God, love people. And daily, God was adding to their number those who were being saved. Right now, there's an incredible food shortage happening in Ethiopia. $100 will provide enough food and seeds for an entire family for a month and all their extended family to be able to escape the hunger season or for $28.50 a month for two years, you can provide a farmer like Nagest with complete agricultural training to transform her life. Our opportunity today here in Sarnia, in this moment in time, is to be the hands and feet of Jesus, transforming communities in places where extreme poverty is accepted as a way of life. Can I invite you today to embrace the words of the Proverbs writer in Proverbs 31, verses 8 and 9. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. For the rights of all who are destitute, speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for stories like Nagest, whose life has been radically transformed. I'm also sure that if I was to hear stories from the Sarnia Church today, that I would hear stories of people in this community whose lives have been radically transformed. Thank you for the way that you work to see people draw close to you. And so, Father, our opportunity today is to go beyond is to see people in places of greatest need and to ask ourselves, how is your spirit prompting us to respond? Help us to be in that space and in that place as we listen to your spirit whispering to ours. Here's what I want you to do. Thank you that your ways are greater than our ways and your work will go forward in only the way that you want it to go. So we thank you for our time together of being in your world as the hands and feet of your son. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Don. <clears throat> Appreciate Don uh, coming and, and sharing with us uh, the ministry of Tear Fund, but most significantly, the impact of the power of Jesus uh, among his people. Worldwide, you know, and I think one of the things that challenges me and that we, Don and I, when we communicated together about a month or so ago, is uh, we often ask these kinds of questions of churches and ministries working in other places. And what if they were to ask those questions of us? How would we be able to respond? Uh, and so this is, if you would love to, like to support and find out more about the Ministry of Tear Fund, then in your e-bulletin, those of you who receive e-bulletins, there's links to their website as well as links to this particular project uh, for Ethiopia as well as others. And I encourage you to go there. There's also on our website, and we'll share that uh, over social media later today and throughout, th and maybe another day this week for you to uh, follow up on, on what you've heard. And uh, so we'll share that information so that you can do so uh, for sure. And, uh, and so I would encourage you to, as we have talked about praying for one another, the strength of a church family, brothers and sisters uniting across the world, uh, that the name of Jesus might be made known. Uh, may we do so today uh, for the work of Tear Fund and through the church in Ethiopia. And so let me send you off with this uh, benediction from the end of, of the verses that we read earlier in Ephesians. Now to him who is able to, in, 
to, imme- to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. God be with you. Have a wonderful week. Keep well. Wash your hands and go make a kingdom difference and say happy birthday to Will. Would you do that?